developing listening skills is a major goal for children with cochlear implants. The ability to listen and attach meaning to sounds does not occur instantaneously with implantation, but often develops in small steps over time. As with hearing aids, there are many factors which influence a child's success with the implant and the rate at which listening skills are developed. Factors such as etiology and age of onset of deafness, length of sensory deprivation, educational programs, and parent intervention are factors contributing to a child's auditory development. Parents play an integral role in the rehabilitation process since many natural opportunities for listening exist in the home and occur throughout the day. A parent's awareness of their child's level of auditory development is essential for establishing appropriate expectancies for listening. The levels of auditory development vary from beginning sound awareness to closed-set speech recognition and finally to more advanced open-set speech recognition. Developing awareness of the presence and absence of sound is an appropriate beginning goal for Colburn. Colburn is a four-year-old child from Iceland who was deafened by meningitis at 24 months of age. She had worn hearing aids for two years prior to implantation. The cochlear implant brings all of her responses into the speech range from 250 to 3000 hertz. Colburn is in a total communication school program and is mainstreamed for half of her school day. Colburn has had the implant for 12 days and so far we have seen a lot of changes. For example, before it didn't respond to any sound at all. Now it, she responds to telephone, plumber, and even car horn, that is to say if she concentrates. And it's a great difference, and we didn't expect it to be so, so soon. You just do your normal routine day in, day out, and try to use all those opportunities to keep safe. And I think then things will come slowly, but it will come in the end. But of course it will take time, but the important factor is that before it was useless, but now there is a hope. I know Colton doesn't hear as she used to now before she lost her hearing, so she will have to learn what the new sounds mean. We need to help her to learn to rely on her hearing. Now that Colton can hear, I have to remind myself always to not tap on her and not to turn her face to look at me, because she is hearing more and I have to try and um, use my voice more and, and call her more. Maybe not use as many sounds as I have been using. Come on. 
Okay, let's off my limit. Off. Um, Jennifer is a seven-year-old child who had a congenital progressive hearing loss. She had been aided since diagnosis at 18 months of age. When the loss became profound, she received a cochlear implant and has been wearing it for one year. The cochlear implant brings all of her responses into the speech range from 250 to 4,000 hertz. She is mainstreamed in a regular kindergarten class. Oh, it likes your finger. <laughs> Most of the time, um, we're just, we do spontaneous routine skills. If there's, if the dog's barking or if there's um, something going on, the dishwasher's being turned on or, or whatever, um, we would, at, at the beginning, we would, I would say, do you hear that? And she would, and then it, I would point to the sound. We'd do some listening skills. Now, the, a lot of the sounds she can identify on her own. The, it's been a year since the implant, and she can identify most of the sounds on her own. And she will even, um, things that I didn't think she could hear, <laughs> will say that she can, she can hear them. So um, it's just wonderful. When you talk really loud, it scares the poor kitty cat. When you talk real soft, she's fine. Like Jesse. Sit. Sit. Good. Very good. Alice. Alice. When we work with her uh, vocabulary cards, um, when we work on a new book, I will make vocabulary cards of the new words that she's learning. And then a lot of times we will do um, auditory training. We'll make a game out of it, and I will ha cover my mouth and see if she can understand um, these new words. Come. Come. Very good. Let's do some more. We try and uh, teach her uh, new words uh, everywhere we can, uh, even when uh, if I take her out with me on a tractor or uh, in my pickup, we go down and look at the cattle. There's always something to talk about. Wherever you're at, there's, there's something to talk about. There's the, the sounds the cows make. There's the uh, airplanes. She wants to eat grass. I know. She likes grass. Stop. Stop. <laughs> I said stop. Okay. Go. Where do you want to go, Jennifer? <laughs> I should have went and got my horse. Where do you want to go, Jennifer? Do you want to stop? No, oh, we are stop. Just stop. Okay. You want to go? Okay, let's go then. Casey is a seven-year-old child who was deafened by meningitis at five years, one month. He had worn hearing aids for nine months before he was implanted one year ago. Casey has no aided responses with hearing aids. His cochlear implant brings all of his responses into the speech range from 250 to 4,000 hertz. He is mainstreamed for half of the school day in a regular first grade class. I will go into the zoo. I want to see it. Yes, I do. My expectations have changed drastically for Casey. I expect him not to have to solely look at me, not have to have eye contact with me all the time. Um, I expect when I maybe say a few words, not a whole long sentence or a paragraph for him to understand everything I'm saying, but if I call his name, if I tell him to go brush your teeth, easy things like that. I expect him not to have to have eye contact with me continually or not have to ha read my lips all the time. My expectations for Casey are pretty high at this point. He wants to stay with the men. He would like to stay with the men, too. He just wants friends. Casey, 
We're going to make a fruit salad. Fruit salad. I make a list to go to the grocery store, and I'll ask Casey, what do you think we need for a particular, like a fruit salad, or he likes a vegetable dip, and I'll say, what kind of vegetables do you think we should buy? Um, carrots. I don't think Casey has any carrots. Carrots? Maybe he don't have, maybe he wants them, I don't know. Look and see if he has any. We need to unpack the groceries. Pack the groceries. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you take out the things that are crunchy? Crunchy. Mm -hmm. And when we get home, I'll tell him, why don't, you, why don't we unload the groceries? I'll tell him to take out, you know, the cherries or take out the broccoli or uh, take out the carrots, something like that. I'll take make make it an auditory um, training lesson right there. You don't think carrots are crunchy? I think they're crunchy. Maybe it's time for the salad is crunchy. Yeah, carrots are crunchy. Celery crunchy? Kind of. I think it's crunchy. I kind of crunchy. Celery crunchy. Mm -hmm. I think so. Him and Timothy, we play fish together, and, and Timothy will cover his mouth. And while they're playing fish, Timothy will ask him, do you have an eight or you have a queen or something like that? And so Timothy works with auditory training, too, even at home. It's really amazing. Well, thank you. Okay. Okay. It's Timothy. Timothy, do you have a tail? Tail. Tail. No, it's fish. Hmm, what's that? You must not have one. I don't have tails. Casey will get stuck on a certain word. Um, some words starting with S H, S S. They're difficult to get auditorily. And I'll give him like an S or a P H or a sh. I'll let him see it on my lips, and he'll get it right away. And so that'll be something that he'll have to work on, that certain consonant. He's in a bookstore. He's in a bookstore. Yeah, in a case. In a bookstore. 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 Okay. Uh-oh, where was this? You don't remember this. Where do you think we were? No, that's when we went to Florida. What? We went to Florida. What's Florida? Florida. 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 Mm-hmm. Real far away. Yeah. And you were only two years old. Two years old. Mm-hmm. So you don't remember when we went there. It was like Disneyland. So we that was not Disneyland. It's like a Disneyland. It's called Walt Disney World. Disney World? Mm -hmm. Walt Disney World. Walt Disney World? Mm -hmm. <gasps> I want to go to Walt Disney World. I know you do. <laughs> Parents are essential members of a cochlear implant team with their key role being to maximize their child's listening potential at home. Any experience at home can be made auditory and adapted to meet individual levels of auditory functioning. Listening can be formal and structured or informal and incidental. Parents need to discover what works best for them and feel confident in pursuing their individual style. Developing listening skills 
is a major challenge for parents of any hearing impaired child. And for many parents of cochlear implant children, this also represents a new beginning.